You are looking at a map provided by CBDCTracker.org, illustrating that now to begin 2022, countries representing over 90% of the world's gross domestic product, almost the entire global economy, is in one stage or another implementing fiat central bank digital currencies, or CBDCs. Given that the world is currently drowning in debt and many unsaved for unfunded promise piles, it makes sense that governments would seek to debase their fiat currency units faster than ever. And having an international fiat CBDC system to give out supplemental payments to suffering citizens makes sense, all while gaining further control over the underlying populace. This week, China announced that the PBOC's Fiat CBDC Yuan pilot program had launched digital apps for Android and Apple phones. And only last week, the government of Mexico announced that they will have a Fiat Mexican Peso program by 2024. How will further fiat currency digitization and debasement affect the bullion markets to come? This week, we'll take a gander at the late November 2021 OMFIF report entitled Central Bank Digital Currencies and Gold, Implications for Reserve Managers. Hello, on behalf of SDBullion.com, this is James Anderson, and this is your SD Bullion Market Update. Before we go any further, if you like this kind of content, be sure to smash the like button so we can get this algorithm to serve like-minded bullion bulls. As well, subscribe to our channel if you've not done so already. We're about to draw the winning email address for the 500 ounce 2021 Silver American Eagle Coin giveaway, and we'll reveal and we'll reveal that winner here in the coming weeks. Additionally, the excellent news is that we're again going to run a new 500 ounce giveaway contest in 2022. Click the link below to enter again. Raise your hand if you like free stuff. We were going to give away a free tube of the brand new 2022 Silver Eagle coins. Then we said, nah, make it 25 tubes. SD Boolean is at it again with the Silver Eagle Monster Box sweepstakes. How many coins are in a monster box? Let's just say one lucky participant is going to be showing off their best celebratory dance moves with 500 shiny new silver bird friends. So head over to sdboolean.com backslash sweepstakes for your chance to win. Good luck to all of you who entered this new 2022 giveaway. Now let's get back to the precious metals markets. This week we saw a sell-off in silver and gold spot prices to kick off 2022. The silver spot price dragged down near 22 an ounce, while the gold spot price finished just below the 1800 ounce fighting line of late. The gold-silver ratio ran up and closed at 80 to finish this week's trading. Reports this week from India show that 2021 had the most significant gold bullion demand in about one decade. India imported around 1,050 metric tons of gold, or over 33.7 million troy ounces, in 2021. We have to go back to 2011 to find high gold import demand in India akin. And this is back when the Indian rupee price of gold began to run away to record high price levels. We are now nearly plus 50% higher in terms of the fiat rupee gold price in 2022, yet the Indian populace is still buying gold bullion tonnage in record volumes. To give you a further perspective of how large 1,050 metric tons of gold bullion is for India alone in one year, that's almost the entire gold bullion pile registered and eligible that supposedly backstops the Comex gold futures market which still dominates the daily gold spot price fluctuations day to day. Further news on the New York Commodity Market Exchange. This week, the CME Group's COMEX lowered margin requirements for both leveraged gold and silver futures contract trading. This is often taken as a signal that more smaller, pocketed, long traders may gain more traction in the coming weeks. Of course, you all recall the COMEX raising silver margin requirements in the late January 2021 during the peak of the silver squeeze, which according to the CFTC chairman Rostin Benham, helped to quote, tamp down what could have been a much worse situation in the silver market. We're now turning our attention to bullion in the coming fiat CBDC system being launched this decade. First note that this report was supported by the World Gold Council, a subsidiary of the oldest central bank and fiat currency backstop in the central bank game. That's the Bank of England. Much of this report is non-committal and speculative or forward guessing in nature. It's merely more of a think piece on how gold's role may change as the fiat CBDC system comes into fruition. I'll leave a link uh, to this report in the show notes below. You can find it there. 
Here's how they surmise where the major fiat reserve currency issuers are in their fiat CBDC developments to date. You can press pause to read this portion. I'm not going to bore you reading it aloud. Some interesting highlights in the articles are as follows on page 10 regarding, quote, programmable and expiring digital money give central banks greater tools to implement monetary policy. For instance, through future CBDC helicopter monies akin to the helicopter currency payments handed out during the last less than two years of this pandemic, they state, quote, implementing helicopter money by itself does not require programmable money in the same way that implementing expiring tokens does. However, it could be made more practical to execute. More importantly, authorities would be able to place limits on when and where helicopter drops are spent, allowing them to stimulate a depressed economy in a more direct manner. Tokens could be programmed to be spent on consumer goods, more likely to contribute to an economy's growth rather than speculative or store value instruments, generating growth and inflation more directly. Now, I'm just thinking out loud, and people would simply use the helicopter drop currency to buy, say, food or pay their rents, and then use one's regular income to supplement perhaps buying bullion instead. The report also talks about the potential of expiring CBDCs and gold. Quote, in a world with expiring CBDC, gold's role as a store of value may rise in prominence. As noted by Giselle in the 19th century, expiring money would help resolve the inherent tension between two key functions of money. Its role is both a store of value and a means of payment. If the former is programmed out of CBDC, something else will have to take its place. Other forms of liquidity may fill this role, such as privately issued demand deposits at banks, but it's likely that gold will become more attractive as a tool to circumvent the programmed expiration and store wealth more generally. According to the World Gold Council survey of retail gold investors across six economies, Germany, India, the US, the UK, China, and Russia, 67% of retail holders keep gold because it provides protection against inflation and currency fluctuations, suggesting that improved policy transmission may revert back into higher gold demand. The same is true for helicopter money policy channel. Now, speaking for myself, for now, the fiat US dollar still dominates global trade while the euro has its dominance mainly in the center of the map below. And it's illustrated by the gray nations that predominantly use the euro. Uh, but with China and Russia and greater Asian economic growth in the coming decades, the trend towards a less fiat US dollar dominant, more multipolar monetary system is underway. Gold demand in sovereign government reserves stands to benefit further. The report concludes that quote, the only certainty is that gold investors, whether retail, institutional, or in the official sector, will have to examine closely the development of central bank digital currency, the shape it takes, and its implications for policy, financial stability, and global flows. Well, that's stating the obvious. And back in 2018, this is how the Bank for International Settlements broke down uh, in the fiat retail and wholesale CBDC versus bank deposit versus cash versus private digital tokens or cryptocurrencies, if you will. In their money flower that they published in Bloomberg, I took a photo of it in 2018. You can see again, it stems from the only real money, the only real store of value that's going to actually last. And it illustrates that physical precious metals like gold bullion are going to be the source back to everything money. It will outlast all the contrivances that we've just discussed. And my strong suggestion remains for you and for myself now and soon to get your position set before it becomes unaffordable and perhaps less private when doing so later this decade. For you silver bulls out there, uh, I wanted to let you know that I released a top 10 reasons to own silver now, not later video earlier today. I'll leave a link to it at the end of this video in the comment section below too, if you've not seen it yet. I want to see if you agree with my reasonings there, uh, the 10 reasons why I think owning silver now makes total sense. That's all for this week's SD Bullion Market Update. As always, you all out there, take great care of yourselves and those you love. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to give our video a thumbs up. To keep getting bullion-related news and industry insights, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Finally, hit that alert button so you know when we publish fresh content.